Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here with a new device, the Robin by Nextbit. Going to unbox it, give some impressions as well. I'm uh, pretty excited to try this out because it is the first device to integrate cloud storage into the software where you're going to be able to back up your photos, your apps, and other various data as well. So let's open this guy up. So here's the Robin by Nextbit. has their logo right up there on the box. Very interesting shape box. Haven't really seen anything like this before. And opening it on up. You get a little uh, storybook, actually. Uh, it lets you know it never runs out of space when it's charging and connected to Wi-Fi. It's backing up all your apps, photos to the cloud. Uh, when you need more space, Robin will archive the stuff you never open. And then when you want to restore something, you tap it, and it's going to restore it automatically for you. Now, also gives you information that it uses USB Type-C with Quick Charge 2.0. Um, let's you know SIM pin and then the power key is a fingerprint sensor as well I'm actually pretty excited to give some impressions on this power key because uh, I want to know how well it's gonna work so up at the top this is a speaker and down at the bottom is a speaker as well not a home button at all so actually these two speakers both have separate amps as well so they're supposed to be pretty good I'm pretty excited to test those out uh, full review coming soon with more impressions on all of that now in the back here I did get the mint color and you see it says next bit, has their little icon. And also, there are three little dots that are right there, which uh, let you know when it's backing up to the cloud. 13 megapixel camera on the back with dual LED flash. Here's that power button on the right. Oh, and it is an actual button. It is not a capacitive button. And so pressing and holding it, it's going to turn on next bit by Robin, powered by Android, of course. On the left side here are those two color coded, well, not color coded, but just colored buttons that. Activate volume up at the top, headphone jack, microphone down at the bottom, USB type C, and microphone. Now let's move on to the cable and a very uh, thin USB type C cable. It doesn't look like it comes with an AC adapter, which is a little bit interesting, uh, unless it's further down in the box. You have your SIM ejector, which has their logo, bringing this up and this, and that's it. So next now would be their hashtag. So that's all that comes in the box. So interesting, they don't include an AC adapter. However, I do like these types of cables, this thin strip, uh, and then USB Type-C, which of course you can put into the device either way. Awesome, so let's go ahead and get started with the next bit. All right, so here's the startup screen. I'm gonna skip through it very quickly, not really gonna show off anything unless it's notable. All right, so I wanna set up a fingerprint to unlock the device, and that power button acts as a fingerprint scanner. So let's get started. Uh, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my thumb first. However, I might use my left hand pointer finger or middle finger to actually set up if I'm gonna hold it one-handed with my left hand. So just moving it around, it vibrates when, I, when it actually recognizes it. Lift up, fingerprint added. So let's just go ahead and hit next. I'm not gonna add another one. That didn't take too long though. Um, and then you'll see terms of service. You can check sync all of your apps and photos. Like I said, it happens on Wi-Fi and also when charging the device. You can check that out with those dots on the back of the device. All right, we made it to the home screen. It does have a bit of a modified version of Android. So it says say hi to your new home screen where all your apps are. There's a launcher menu, this purple button right here. Uh, tap it, you have archived apps, pinned apps, and all apps. Pinned apps are ones that you don't want to be archived and you're gonna use all the time. Uh, widget space, pinch, got it. So here we go, so that looks like that purple dot's always there. I don't know if I can press and hold it. it. Looks like I can't. So the home screen actually does not have an app drawer. However, if you press those three dots, go to all apps. Looks like it has a vertical scrolling list of all the apps. Of course, if you want to install a different launcher, you can. One of the great things about Android. So you'll see even icons are themed as well, including the camera. Even those soft touch buttons down at the bottom are themed as well. Now I haven't set up any accounts or installed anything yet. I wanna show you out of the box storage. It does come with 32 gigs of out of box storage. Now also keep in mind that it will allow for up to 100 gigabytes of cloud storage included as well. I haven't signed in yet, I haven't set anything up, but I wanna show you that there's 24 and a half gigabytes available out of 32 local storage. And of course you have that extra 100 gigs of storage that uh, Nextbit provides. Continuing on with some specs, you have a 5.2 inch 1080p IPS LCD display. You have an integrated 2680 milliamp hour battery included uh, Snapdragon 808 processor and then also three gigabytes of RAM coupled with it. So overall, like I said, uh, let's jump into settings, scroll down about device. It does come with Android 6.0 Marshmallow. I'm not sure if they're gonna update it to 6.1 soon. Hopefully they do, obviously, as, as you know, it pretty much just includes the new emojis. And of course, some security enhancements as well. 
so interesting. It's a very interesting feel in your hand. Uh, these buttons on the side are very tactile. I do like when pressing them. However, they are pretty flush with the device. So I think it's going to take a little bit while to get used to. Along with, of course, that power button being flush, it's actually indented. It's actually a closer look at that power button so you can kind of see how it does not protrude out of the device. It's actually indented into the device. And it is a button, so you press into it and it's a button. And of course it acts as a fingerprint scanner. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm gonna try and just set my thumb on it and it looks like it's not doing anything. So you do have to actually light up the display for the fingerprint scanner to work. So there we go, so let's try it again. I'm gonna turn it on and leave it on there. Wow, that was really quick. So I'm just gonna press and leave my thumb on Awesome. I actually really like that integration within the power button and of course which is a little bit different because some devices have on the back, some of them have it on a home button if they have it on the front, but with it integrated in the power button, you're probably going to have to be pretty quick though about just tapping it if you want to turn the display on. But overall it doesn't seem like the skin is very heavily themed. Lots of aspects of stock Android including that settings menu being very similar, the recent apps menu being very similar as well. I want to load up the camera very quickly and snap a quick picture. Um, focus and take a picture. Okay, so a little bit of shutter lag in terms of pressing the button and it taking the picture. If we go into that specific picture, it looks really good. I mean, this is a good lighting situation, but otherwise I'm pretty excited to test out the, uh, the camera itself. Now, when it comes to that cloud storage and apps, it's gonna archive apps that you don't regularly use. Now you can also pin apps that you're going to regularly use. With this launcher, you can actually swipe down on specific apps. And of course, I'm not signed in just yet. Lots more to come in my full review, so stay tuned for that about cloud storage. I'll really dive into that in my full review. But to pin this application, you need to sign into your Nextbit account. So that's one way that you can pin it. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work on a third-party launcher, but I'm sure in settings, in those Nextbit storage settings, it's smart storage, you're going to be able to, once you sign into your account, just access it through there. But overall, that would be my unboxing and initial impressions of the Nextbit Robin. Pretty excited to use this as my daily driver for a little while, get a full review up for you guys. Interesting shape, interesting style. I like how different it actually is with that fingerprint scanner being on the power button and all those different cloud storage changes. So lots more to come in that full review. Stay tuned. Click that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.